Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Today, before we begin, I just wanted to note that this was kind of a tough week for me. My best laid plans didn't really work out, I didn't hit my production goals, and my main PC took a big fat dump on me at a really bad time. I made a commitment to bring you guys the tech news every week though, so let's finish strong, and I'll get back to working on all that other stuff next week. Thanks to everyone who has offered support to me this week too. You guys are the best, so on to the tech news. Excellent! Don't judge the new Corsair K65 RGB mini keyboard by its size. It's packed with features like genuine Cherry MX mechanical key switches in red or speed silver and 1.5 millimeter PBT double shot keycaps. The 60% layout and detachable braided USB type C cable make it easy to take on the go. Function keys allow easy access to lighting modes, profiles, macros, media, and more. And the Axon processor provides 8,000 Hertz hyper polling while simultaneously driving up to 20 layer RGB backlighting effects. Click the sponsor link in the description for more on the Corsair K65 RGB mini. Gaming PC enthusiasts everywhere have been forced to do the unthinkable lately. No, not gaming at 30 hertz, but buying rather than building a gaming PC to meet their needs. With GPUs still undersupplied and overpriced, pre-built systems and gaming laptops are filling a void for those who just want to game despite adverse market conditions. If you've been considering a gaming laptop and you're on a budget, I have good news for you. On Tuesday, Intel and Nvidia jointly announced new gaming laptops powered by Intel Tiger Lake H CPUs, which are actually 10 nanometer CPUs, oh my gosh, with new discrete mobile GPU options from Nvidia in the RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti. On the CPU side, the flagship 10 nanometer Tiger Lake H mobile processor is the Core i9-11980HK, an eight core 16 thread chip with a max two core turbo of five gigahertz. And that's actually slower frequency wise than the 10th gen 10980HK, but through architecture and process improvements, Intel is still claiming it to be 19% faster. On the GPU side, the RTX 3050 has 2048 CUDA cores, while the RTX 3050 Ti has 2560, and both sport four gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. They'll still lag behind the RTX 3060, but they should be much faster than the current GTX 1650 and 1650 Ti that are available at this price point. Perhaps even more importantly, these are RTX GPUs with RTX features, meaning DLSS support, which should be a big advantage in the mid-range. RTX 3050 and 30 50Ti laptops went up for pre-order this week starting at $800 to the low 1000s range with wide availability expected by late May or early June. No official word on a desktop variant of the 3050Ti yet, but Pallet did expose an EEC listing this week that included 25 different product codes related to the RTX 3050Ti. So chances are we'll be hearing more about it soon, but the mobile versions are shipping first. In other budget GPU news, the Sienna Chiclid and Navy Flounder are expected to be followed up by the dim gray cavefish and the beige goby. Perhaps I should have led with the fact that AMD Radeon GPU code names are based on colored fish, in case you weren't aware. And beige goby in particular has just popped up in Linux driver packages for RDNA 2 GPUs. Locusa, or Locusa on Twitter, noted specifically that the 16 megabyte L3 cache specs revealed by the driver match with rumors about Navi 24, which will likely power budget range Radeon 6400 and 6500 desktop and mobile graphics cards with up to 16 compute units and 1024 stream processors, and up to 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. I think we can all agree that the world could use more budget GPU options right about now, and the Linux drivers rolling out mean that these could be on their way soon. If a Radeon 6500 seems too low end for you though, the next step up would be a 6600 or 6600 XT. And we also have GPU-Z screenshots for these two GPUs. As reported by videocards.com, these are sourced from Chinese website ChipHell and would be powered by a dim gray cave fish or the Navi 23 GPU rather, which provides 2048 stream processors in the 6600 XT or 1792 stream processors in the 6600. Both cards sport eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 128 bit bus. And while GPU-Z has recently added support for these cards, the 6600 still doesn't show clock speeds. But the 6600 XT shows an impressive 1692 megahertz base and 2684 megahertz boost with the memory running at at 16 gigabits per second. Expect more on these cards when the Computex 2021 virtual conference kicks off on June 1st. 
Speaking of AMD GPU clock speeds, records were broken yet again this week as Team OGS from Greece pushed a PowerColor Radeon RX 6900 XT Ultimate to 3.3 GHz. That's one of the special 6900 XTs based on the Navi 21 Sienna Chiclid XTXH GPUs, which I guess is the biggest fish in the Radeon pond at the moment. The achievement apparently overloaded hardware bot as it was down for a couple of days after the record was set, but Team OGS used LN2 cooling and a 5950X CPU to hit a 3,321 megahertz core clock on the 6900 XT, and then on Tuesday, broke the single GPU record with a score of 37,618 in Fire Strike Extreme with a graphics score of 41,069. Nice. They then followed up on Friday by setting a new 3D Mark 11 performance world record score of 68,534 with uh, almost the same setup except they used the 10900K and the 6900 XT was running at 3.25 gigahertz. And just to round things out, they also now hold the 3D Mark Vantage world record, although they did that with an 11900K and an RTX 3090. So I guess the question now is, uh, where are you at Kingpin? Oh my, my, my. In an update to last week's news about the ongoing drought in Taiwan, TSMC suffered a brief power dip on Thursday afternoon that was tied to a more widespread power outage on the island. TSMC has fabs at all three major science parks in Sinchu, Tainan, and Taichung, but fortunately there was no outage or even a voltage drop. The fact that a power dip like this even made the news is testament to how tense the situation is, with so many companies relying on TSMC's services. If you think that there's too much reliance on TSMC fabs in Taiwan right now, you're probably right. And even TSMC has expansion plans elsewhere. The EU was a possibility, but Reuters is reporting that talks there have gone very poorly, and the chipmaker is now considering further investment in facilities in the USA, specifically in Arizona, where droughts never happen, right? Viewers from Arizona? <laughs> In 2020, though, TSMC said that they'd be spending 10 to 12 billion US dollars on a factory in Phoenix to build out production for their 5 nanometer process. And now they're discussing a 3 nanometer plan that could cost 23 to 25 billion dollars, with the possibility of expanding the campus there to support 2 nanometer manufacturing as well in the next 10 to 15 years. That Reuters report was almost immediately called into question by Taiwanese outlet United Daily News, though, who said TSMC currently has no consideration of investing tens of billions of dollars in the United States, and that TSMC will formally disclose the details of such a deal when a formal decision is made. They do not typically comment on market rumors. And there are a lot of big players involved, including the US government, who wants to subsidize domestic chip manufacturing to the tune of $50 billion, which could very well be a factor in TSMC's decision. But the point is, no contracts have been signed yet, so don't go buying up real estate in Phoenix or anything like that. Do you know who also has chip fabs, though? South Korea. And do you know what makes $50 billion seem like a relatively small amount of money? $450 billion? Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix announced their plans to invest more than 510 trillion won in semiconductor research and production between now and 2030, with Samsung spending 151 billion US dollars and SK Hynix committing 97 billion to existing facilities and 106 billion for four new plants. That's almost as impressive as South Korea's entirely successful campaign to saturate the world with K-pop music. Like, quite literally, my daughter already asks for a new new na na all the time. I'm working on the dance for my TikTok debut. That's all I got. Hey, it's time for Tech Briefs, now softer and more absorbent. Our friends at Hardware Unbox dug into some Intel B560 motherboard testing this week, and it was disappointing. A far cry from the B550 experience on the AMD side, Intel's budget chipset options are wildly inconsistent due to power limit settings and VRM quality variants, leading to a 30 to 50% performance drop in CPU intensive testing with lower end boards. When memory overclocking for B560 was announced, it seemed like it might be a good budget competitor for B550, but now that recommendation is mired in confusion. And if you're looking for a higher quality B560 board, you might as well just opt for a Z590, as long as you're not going for the ASRock Z590 Phantom Gaming 4, of course. Steve did a bang up job testing as usual, so check the description for a link to the full video. Cryptocurrency fans understandably like to point out the advantages of crypto, like how the value of Bitcoin isn't subject to manipulation by some rich dudes at the World Bank who can game the system for their own benefit, like they do with fiat currency. So when notable rich dude Elon Musk 
tweeted about his company Tesla no longer accepting Bitcoin on Wednesday, causing a 14% drop in value that Elon totally didn't take advantage of for his own benefit, in the same way that he totally isn't manipulating the price of Dogecoin because LOL, it's just a meme, bro. Everyone was cool with it. No oversight needed there, and Elon is totally your friend and wants to help you get rich. Hopefully the sarcasm comes across here. Wouldn't it be cool if this was GTA 6 gameplay footage? It's not. GTA 6 is just a myth, you fools. This is GTA 5 footage that's made to look photorealistic by the team at Intel Labs with machine learning. They used a collection of images of a German city center to train the neural network, which also tied into GTA's game engine so it could know things like object distance and lighting methods. Then it produced this really nice looking footage. They even say that with the right hardware and further optimization, this could be done in real time. So maybe that's all Rockstar needs to do. A Apply this technique to GTA 5 and bam, GTA 6. Finally, if you or anyone you know uses Wi-Fi, stop, stop right now. Okay, you can finish this video first, but be aware that a new collection of 12 vulnerabilities dubbed Fragmentation and Aggregation Attacks, or Frag Attacks for short, has been discovered by Belgian cybersecurity expert Matthew Van Hoof whose name I'm probably pronouncing very poorly. Fortunately, manufacturers are already patching their products against these vulnerabilities, since three of them are exposed by just baked in bugs in the Wi-Fi standard itself. Windows updates are out, for example, but lots of products will still need updates, since again, this relates to vulnerabilities in the Wi-Fi standard itself. And you know, there's a lot of things that use Wi-Fi. But there you have it guys, tech news for this week, and I hope you're feeling good and having a nice weekend. If you're not, I hope you feel better tomorrow, and remember to reach out to your friends or family if you're having a hard time, it happens to us all. I should end the show now though, uh, your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, including the ever popular Imperial Pint Glasses that will be restocked very soon, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.